We recently bought a Nissan Leaf, which is an electric car, which I'm now charging off of this portable charger, which is um, powered by 120 volts. It plugs into a regular outlet. But since I have a 240 volt dryer outlet, which I'm not using since we have a gas dryer, we have for almost 20 years now, I would like to move the circuit and uh, put it in our garage. I do not recommend that you do this on the basis of watching what I do. I make no warranty that it's the right way to do it. Um, these are just some tips. So I'm gonna turn off the power, of course. And um, you can see on the circuit breaker, that blue thing over here is the dryer, which is off. Now, I don't trust that it's off. I'm gonna measure that it's off. But um, it's off and I'm gonna, I, I'll put a little tape here just for now so somebody else doesn't come and turn it on while I'm working. Here is our gas dryer. This is the laundry room which is right next to the garage. Garage is about um, 10 feet over that way. But um, behind here was the electric connection for the electric dryer I guess someone had here before. So what I've done is, of course I measured it to see that the circuit is really off. I don't just trust looking at the circuit breaker. Actually being the coward that I am, what I did was have the power on, check that the outlet was live, flip the circuit breaker, and then check that the power was gone. So I'm doubly sure that this is actually off now. So now I'm going to see where this wire goes. It, uh, most of the wire is, runs up into the attic through that hatch. Okay, well here's the attic and should be right about here. Not far from the hatch. I've got a flashlight here. So it looks like that cable right there is um, the dryer circuit. Now this house was built in the early 70s when they were using aluminum wire. Not a good idea. Um, so I'm going to Let's make doubly sure that this is the right circuit, but if it is, then I'm going to cut this and um, I'm actually going to use copper for most of it. So here's how I'm going to verify. What I'm going to do, this flashlight has a sort of a strobe mode. I'm going to stick this right by this hole that goes down through the wall. Okay, I'm down by the outlet again. Yeah, I can see the flashing, but I'll turn off the light so that uh, the camera can pick it up. Yeah, pretty clear. This is the right hole. So I've taken up one of the so-called floorboards of the attic. And here is the power cable, aluminum cable, that I intend to reroute. Um, I'm going to cut it right about there. I'll leave one staple to anchor it where it goes back into the wall in case somebody wants to wire it back up later. Alright, it's cut. Let me take back what I said before about making sure that the power is off. The better way is to just hire an electrician to do it. Okay, if there's any doubt, just pay somebody. You know, it's a few bucks and better than um, getting killed. So here we can see another place where the floorboard has been taken up and the cable is held in place by a staple. Now I want to pull this cable out so I'm going to have to remove that staple. Instead of putting a crowbar right under here or a pry bar uh, which might mess up the cable, what I'm going to do is clamp a vice grip 
onto the staple. And then, hopefully I can get this and just pry the staple just a little bit. Okay, I don't need to take the whole thing off. Just enough to, um, see, now it's loose, so I can just slide this out. And I guess I could take the staple out later if I wanted to, but uh, I, I can just slide the cable out. Now why am I pulling this cable out? Why don't I just cut it off way down there and just um, run an entirely new cable that's copper all the way from the service panel to my destination? Because uh, I'm cheap and that costs more. We have a perfectly good cable here and it will make the run part of the way. And besides that, it's a real pain to get through the stucco and fish something into the service panel, not to mention dangerous. Um, I did it when I installed our solar um, and it was a big pain and then you get, ins well, you get inspections and all that, but too much trouble. So I'm just going to reuse this cable, just take it out and reroute it. So here's the cut cable, um, which maybe you can see, it's aluminum. And the new wire that I'm going to run, in fact, is this, um, let's see if we can get some light on there, is copper. It's 10-2 um, copper, which means it has three conductors. The ground, I guess, is assumed. And I pulled it through, I don't know, maybe you can see it. There's a hole. The roof is very, very low at that point, but I found that hole going into the garage, going through the fire, uh, firewall uh, by the same technique, using my flashy light and threaded the, this Romex, this orange cable through. Well, by the way, I got the best price for it at Lowe's, surprisingly. Um, it was, but the wire started to curl up in that area over there. And I couldn't crawl in there in that narrow space to grab it. So I made this, I just got a stick and nailed, put a couple of nails in the end and I was able to use that to grab the wire and guide it through to where I needed it to be. Okay, so let's go downstairs. Just joining two wires would seem to be a real simple task. You just get some wire nuts and uh, splice them together. These are um, designed for this kind of wire. And if you look on the back of these packages, you know, in the fine print, it will tell you it is good for <coughs> two number 10s or a number 6 plus one number 10 or, or whatever. Three number 18s. But it'll give you all the combinations that will work and this one will work for me. Since I'm joining copper to aluminum, I want to put some of this anti-ox compound on it. It's specially designed for that sort of thing so that um, to minimize the corrosion from the different kinds of metals. Okay, so well just put the wire nuts on but I can't just leave that thing hanging out in the attic. You know, what if a rat trips over it or something and messes it up besides, besides it not being to code. So, um, fortunately these boxes are kind of cheap. This kind, it's, um, oh, I don't know, about one and a half inches deep, I think, one and a quarter, something like that. These are $1.25. <coughs> and for some reason, when the box gets to be about two inches deep, two and an eighth or something, then it gets to be five dollars. I don't know why, because it's not that much more metal. But anyway, um, I can get away with the shallow box because, hey, all that's inside is going to be two wire nuts and a wire coming in one side, wire going off the other side. <clears throat> Let's see, it has these knockouts, which... Um, 
I will work out and because I don't want to have a naked wire just um, hanging on here because the sharp edge is going to cut it so you know it's sort of nickel and diming is adding up but I've got um, the appropriate size clamps for non-metallic wire NM NM cable Romex in other words and another one for the aluminum that's appropriate that will fit into here. And finally when everything is put together I'll put this lid on it this cover plate it's, it's about 50 cents these are cheap it's just metal um, to anchor the cables in place the Romex I'm going to use staples these regular staples I've had these for a long time They're, but the other cable is kind of fat so I'm going to use these bigger um, staples and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually wire most of it before I staple down just in case I screw up or I'll have flexibility maybe I'll put in a few staples but to really anchor it down to code you know there's a certain spacing you're supposed to use um, I'll staple it down as the very last step when I'm sure everything is right alright so we're in the garage now what kind of receptacle am I going to put in this is an L6-20 receptacle I got off of eBay um, I took a look at it it looks pretty new actually I think maybe it was new comes with this cover plate included so I don't have to go hunting for one fits in a standard 4 inch box and what else do I need so again I've got I took a look at this and it's actually kinda shallow you know I said hey will this fit it actually will fit in the shallow box so I can save um, a few dollars and if I don't like it later then I can always put in a, a deeper box now why am I using this number 10 wire which is like a 30 amp circuit typically when this is a 20 amp socket for the car charger well because the breaker is 30 amps already and maybe someday I'll have some 30 amp charger or somebody will want to put in a dryer here but um, anyway I'll be wired and fused for 30 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a label and put it on here somewhere I'll use one of those uh, label makers and say that this is a 30 amp circuit even though it's a 20 amp socket just to uh, so people remember oh yeah, yeah and of course so one of these cable clamp deals to put in at the appropriate place now this this kind of box which is well I don't know it's about a dollar twenty five not very much is made so it can go right on um, on one of these studs see it uh, yeah I'm not saying that this is where I'm going to put it but it has these ears and you can screw it or nail it to this stud like this alright so the junction box is mounted and I'm just about to hook up the wires now the line side coming in from the right has four wires it's got two hots a black and a red or black with the red stripe a neutral and a ground I only have three wires on this 10-2 cable the black one is hot but the white one I'm going to make hot too now as a precaution so that um, the next person or maybe even myself with my you know if I'm absent-minded is going to know that it's a hot wire I'm going to get some of um, get some of Marianne's nail polish it's a shame to use this because this is like ultra pro polish but I'm only going to use a little bit um, and I'm going to paint this wire this white wire red and I'll do the same on the other side now 
a good guy is not going to trust. And, you know, the next guy is going to measure the voltage and figure out that it's uh, actually a hot wire. But, you know, I'm going to be a nice guy. And besides code. I'll just take a few shots and skip over the boring stuff. All right, so now I'll go and um, wire up the other side. Sorry, I forgot to take a video of the outlet. Um, put all the stuff back already, but you can kind of see it. It's oh, let me. Oh. Anyway, that's it. Big deal. Uh, it does work, so I'm happy for now. The only other thing I got to do is make a label for the service panel, the circuit breaker box. That's something that a inspector often tags on a home job that the person did not label the new circuit or a moved circuit. That's about it.